Hello and welcome to our lesson on the TI-84 Plus CE student course. In this video we are focusing on further learning and in particular the normal distribution curve. And some of the things that we are going to look at are where the distribution menu is, the difference between normal PDF and CDF, how to use inverse norm and the sketching of normal distribution curves. So we know that a normal distribution curve will look something like this. It has symmetry about the mean, and in this case, the mean is 23. And there will be three sun deviations up to pretty much all the probability, and three sun deviations down. And in this case, the sun deviation is 5. Um, I'm just showing you the graph to start with, and then we'll come to that nearer the end. But we know that this is from uh, up to a certain value would be the probability for this blue one, between certain bounds for this red one, and from a certain value uh, to infinity for the green one. So where do we find distribution? Well, that's in the distribution button here. And we can see that there are three main buttons that we're going to use. Over here, we're going to use the draw in a minute to get a graph like I showed you a minute ago. But these would be the three that we would use. Although there are three main options here, pretty much all of the math that you're going to do in the courses are going to use normal CDF and inverse norm. And I do just want to talk about the difference between normal PDF and CDF just to clarify a few things. As explained in the TI-84 Plus CE reference guide, normal CDF will do um, continuous data between lower and upper bounds, whereas normal PDF is normally for discrete data via probability density function, and it gives you a precise value. Now, what do I mean by that? So because it will give us a probability density function for a discrete data, it will give us the exact value at a particular point. So if I typed in this number for x down here, it would give me the height of the normal distribution curve at that point. And I'll show that in a bit more detail in a minute, but majority of the math that you're going to do uh, in your scoring is going to focus on normal CDF, so the cumulative density function, and the opposite of that, which is the inverse norm to go from percentage back. So let me show you those two in action. So number two, now if it takes you straight to the normal character screen like this, it means that you haven't got the updated OS. But most of the time, when you go into distribution and you go to normal CDF, it will take you to this screen. This is going to give you everything from uh, negative infinity. Uh, don't get this number confused with e to the negative 99, which is also scientific notation for a very small um, number. This is negative 1 times 10 to the 99, which is a massive negative number. Don't forget a million only has six zeros. This has 99 zeros. So if we're going to run with this and let's say we do a value up to say 20 uh, let's go let's go 18 because that's one standard deviation less than um, the mean of 23 and we know that that answer should give us nearly 16 percent about 0.159 so that's from the lower bound if we want it between bounds then we can either go back into it again and just change the lower bound say I don't know to let's go 15 this time come down and use it again or equally we can go up and copy it and adjust the numbers in the um, I suppose the formula uh, to make it easier for ourselves just to reuse that and get all those different ones now don't forget that inverse norm is going from the uh, percentage back to find the uh, value that it will give us that for that probability so if we go for inverse norm, let's say we want an area, I don't know, bottom 5%. So don't forget for 5%, we type it as a decimal and that would be 5% there. Stick with the mean of 23, standard deviation of 5. And the nice thing is now with the more newer OSs, we can either find the left bound, the, the lower, we can find the upper 5%, or we can find the middle 5%. So that would be 2.5% uh, either side of the mean. So for now, we're just going to go left come down to paste and that will be the value that will be for the bottom five percent and just to confirm that we know that this value up here let's just come back and copy this one again this gave us the bottom 15.9 percent so let me just do this one in reverse to show you this happening if we use the store button for that value and then we go back up to inverse norm and rather than using the bottom five percent I'm going to use the a value well, that should give us the same value that we got up earlier. And let's see if it does. Yep, there you go. 
with a bit of rounding error, it's 18. So that's the value for the bottom 15.9%. And that is the majority of what you would use. I think that the graphing is a powerful visual, especially for teachers, but it isn't for nice for you to see exactly how it works. And I'm just going to show you this in action as well as the PDF. So we talked about the height of this one and where it is. So if we used PDF, then um, we run with, um, and see, notice again, it takes me straight to that calculator screen. That's because I've gone from graph. So if I go back this way, um, let's go for a, that x value of that middle, which is 23, the mean, uh, standard deviation, uh, sorry, the mean again we know is 23, and the standard deviation is 5. So what's going to tell me is that the height should be 0 0.0797. So the height here should be 0 0.0797. And we can see from our window, that's the number that I'm using. So if you did want to do a draw, then we come across the draw this time. We then do shade norm, and it's all set up as before. Um, what should we do this time? Let's say we do between um, 20 and say 24, mean of 23, standard deviation of five. Uh, it's changed to a different color. Let's go magenta, beautiful. And we can see that it gives us the area, 30% or 30.5% uh, between those two bounds. Hopefully you found that useful and thank you for watching.